What's up guys, welcome to Q&A Mondays, I'm Thad Barnett. When it comes to construction, whether it be residential or commercial, you have lots of trades and subcontractors all working together to get their individual jobs done um, based on the schedule of the overall building's project. And the challenge for a general contractor or a construction manager or an architect is getting all of those companies and people scheduled when they should get their job done. So how does metal roofing fit into the overall building sequence uh, of construction. So today I have Dave Stubbs from Sheffield Metals to help me out. Thanks for being here, Dave. Absolutely, Thad. So tell me, where should metal roofing fit into the building construction sequence? Because as we know, scheduling is tough in construction. So where would you like to see metal roofing fall in that sequence? Let's say it's new construction and you've got all kinds of different trades trying to get their job done. And let's just use stucco so we've got a metal roof and we've got stucco going on the wall one's got to go before the other and so many times i see where they put they want to put on the metal roof because they want to get that building dried in they want to make sure that there's no water coming in so they can get their inside finishes done and so you know you get it dried in you put on the metal roof well now they want to do stucco there's not a real good way to protect the metal roof from the stucco and the the other trades that are going to be involved I don't know whether it's stucco or masonry or you know whatever that condition is siding wood siding but if you can integrate those two systems and, and do a good job of sequencing you can limit the damage and limit the finger pointing when something something goes bad we always try to you know we endorse a, a pre-flashing with a receiver that you can counter flash over the top of say sidewall conditions so there are some preemptive things that you can do so that sequencing isn't such a big deal um, and pre-flash is one way to do it communication is is huge and, and what's tough is a lot of the construction management teams aren't necessarily integrating all those components at the same time you know they're looking at an excel spreadsheet or something on paper that says oh you guys should be here and you don't want to do something before the sequencing is right i think there are certain conditions where you just kind of have to put your foot down and say hey this isn't right um Let's talk about it, communicate. Let's try to come up with solutions because that's that's really what we try to be is the solution people um, when it comes to our weather tech warranties and trying to you know figure out what's going on the wall. How do we how do we endorse the best way to do it? A lot of times we see or they're trying to slide flashing back behind the siding. It that's that's not going to work. You, you need to get back behind that building wrap and make sure that that's that's conducive to a water lap condition. So. Could you go ahead and explain what you mean by pre-flash and, and kind of talk me through that process? Because, you know, if I'm a construction manager and maybe I'm not experienced in working with metal roofs before, you know, what does that mean for me? Sure. So we can, you can go in and put a, a flashing up against the wall um, that we can get back into and integrate into our flashing design where you put the flashing on the siding or the stucco goes over the building wrap goes over the top of that flashing in a watershed condition. And then the finished product goes over the top of that. And then the, the roof goes on between the sequencing and the right formula to get us to a weather tight water lap condition is really, you know, preemptive flashing, preemptive design, um, asking the questions of, you know, what's the schedule looking like? Those, those are all conditions that, that need to be discussed. What about from a metal roofer, you know, perspective, what can they do to kind of stay on top of this and kind of make sure that they're having the best chance possible? Well, a lot of it, you know, like I say, it comes down to communication. What's that general contractor, that construction management team's position? Are they involved? If they're not involved, hopefully you can get some buy-in to the other subcontractors to coordinate. Coordination is so huge. And, um, you know, you've got so many different trades. You've got Stud guys might not be doing the, the drywall skin on a building and the drywall guys aren't doing the stucco on the building and the stucco guys aren't doing the metal roof. So all those teams need to discuss what's happening. And that should, in, in my perspective, that should be the construction management job. Lo and behold, it really comes down to those guys in the field to integrate their systems into, in, into each other, you know, to make the best product as an end result. What are some things that can happen, you know, if a metal roof is installed first and then, you know, some masonry uh, goes up or something like that? What can happen to that metal roof? Yeah, I've, I've seen some really horrible things. Um, 
you know, where you've got a 20 foot wall adjacent to a metal roof and they come in and put their scaffold right on the roof. And of course they don't want it to slide off. So they nail the, the plates down to the roof to make sure that the scaffold doesn't you know, fall off. But you know, there's a lot of compromise um, when things like that happen. It's, and it's not just the aesthetics, scratches, gouges, things like that are like the better part of what can happen, which sounds horrible already. But when you see them screwing their plates down to the, from the scaffold in there, it, it's bad. Um, and even, even to the point where siding guys, I've seen siding guys run their siding all the way down to the metal roof and then put nails right at the bottom of the siding to hold it on. And then your water level rises just a little bit and you can have water infiltration in the system if it's not, you know, properly prepared and protection, uh, you know, to the metal roof can happen. It, it just never seems to be adequate. I mean, we've seen, um, everything from, you know, infilling the, in between the standing seams with foam and putting board over it, but just the sheer traffic of putting all those pieces on the roof and installing the insulation in between them and then removing it, just that traffic alone can result in a less than desirable uh, condition to the roof. It, it's not suitable for heavy foot traffic. So, you know, what are some tips that you have when, you know, you're working with a subcontract, another subcontractor, um, you know, maybe there you have to communicate with them. Uh, wh what should you be looking out for? How you, should you be working with them? Well, in my perspective, it, you know, it comes down to bid time. Like, what are those conditions on the drawings, and what do we have to look forward to look look at look forward to? Because look, any time a building leaks, guess who they're calling? The roofer. The roofer. It could be it could be an HVAC unit that's leaking. That was probably sixty percent of the leak responses that we went to were you know. A, a unit where the electrician didn't seal up his pipe coming through the curb or the condensation pipe didn't come out past the curb and it was leaking into the curb section. So not every leak is the roofer's fault, but it becomes the roofer's problem because they're responsive and they have to look at it, looking at the plans and seeing how things integrate and having an idea and experience to say, Hey, we need to get in there beforehand or, you know, discuss what the through wall flashing is looking like with the masons. Because sometimes with masonry, there's through wall flashing that gets back to the structural component, through wall flashing, and the brick sits on there so that any water that goes in the cavity can get out of there. And those are all discussions that need to be had, you know, as this as the project, you know, comes into the fold. Who's doing what? Who's going where? And one of the worst problems you can have is the masons are trying to do the same section as the roofing guys. You know, that's, that's just battle for territory. It shouldn't be a competition. It should be an integrated part of the building. Um, that's generally why there's, you know, subcontractor meetings, there's, there's sequencing meetings. Uh, I've worked some, with some really good general contractors and the, the, they call them sequencing meetings, which that's really what's necessary is to, is to get that sequencing because, whether it's interior or exterior, sequencing always comes into, you know, what's going on. Foresight, communication, uh, those are key. And not only, you know, the office people need to have an idea of what the sequencing looks like, but the field guys need to have a good feel for what's, you know, how fast the mason guys are coming around the building or the, how fast are the stucco guys going to get to the north side because we've got to get that flashing in before they get there. Because not the whole the whole building won't be ready for you, right? That's not that's not the way it works. The masons have to start on one side, and and somebody else has to start on the other side. So, um, it's not just a spot check; it's sequencing for the entire project. You had a good point there about you know working with some good GCs in the past. What are some other best practices that you've seen um, a construction manager or a general contractor you know put forth in in your projects? Um, just being diligent about putting the meetings together and talk about, you know, today, next week, and 30 days. A format to not lay out um, what's happening today, but have an idea what's going on today, what our goals are for the end of the week. It's not just what's trending. It's what's trending, what we see out front, and how do we get to the finish line? You've got to have that, that broad and narrow scope and perspective on, on how you get to the finish line. 
and uh, bringing everybody together as a team is super important. Nobody, nobody wants to have, you know, any sort of battle to get their job done. They also don't want to get the call, you know, Hey, we need 30 feet of flashing put in today. Like today, you've got to be thinking ahead because not everything is available as we've, we've been through, you know, the last three years, the crisis of materials and manpower. Um, so I think foresight is even more important today than it was 10 years ago. So it sounds like, you know, you need to work with uh, the other subcontractors that are going to be installing things before the metal roof, during and after, because if they're trying to mount something to the roof, you know, whether it's an HVAC unit or solar or whatever it might be, you know, it's good for you to know that before they start drilling into the roof. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there, there's some horror stories out there where, um, you know, the sequencing went uh, just fine. And then there's an afterthought. Good example of, of a, a city that didn't want to pay for the general contractor to have oversight on the solar install. So the general contractor did all his due diligence, great sequencer, big contractor here in town. And they got the warranty on the roof. They paid a substantial amount per foot for the roof. Job was closed out, inspected, warranted. And then they decided to bring in solar and put on the roof. And that wasn't very good because they just lost their warranty. So it's sequencing throughout the entire project to, to make sure that everything is suitable for the owner. Because that's who you're really trying to um, make happy or, yeah. you know, fulfill their, you know, your, your contractual obligations, really. It's advantageous for everyone to say, hey, let's do it as a team. So it sounds like the bottom line here is communication and planning. You know, those two things go hand in hand and are super important when you're working with other people, other companies to try to fulfill that that same goal. So thanks for uh, being on the episode today, Dave. Really appreciate your knowledge every single time. Thanks a lot, Dad. Appreciate it. Anytime you need me, give me a ring, man. Comment down below. If you have any questions, subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. As always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you next time.